Most people who are passionate about caves and participate in the sport of caving on a regular basis began by going on recreational trips. The sport of caving involves exploration in an environment that typically requires crawling and climbing in wet and muddy conditions that can be challenging and unfamiliar, but overcoming those challenges and learning the skills needed to travel through caves safely and efficiently can be extremely rewarding and fun. Caves can be like giant playgrounds, where both children and adults alike enjoy themselves. Involvement in the sport of caving over time naturally evolves into an appreciation for caves, a desire to protect them, and a curiosity about how they formed. It's common to later develop more specialized interests, and those who visit caves with a work objective are typically referred to as project cavers. Project or work trips can be for the purposes of resource management, survey and exploration, restoration or conservation of the cave environment, cave science and research, cave rescue training, or photography. Access to some caves with more sensitive resources, such as many of those in the national parks, may require an approved work objective. For many project cavers, the improvements they make to the cave, the data they gather, or the discoveries they make, gives them a greater purpose and a strong sense of accomplishment. Many cavers are passionate about conservation and restoration of impacted caves, and they devote their time and labor to cleaning up trash, repairing broken cave formations, or removing graffiti left by less considerate and less informed visitors. Many private and public commercial caves have organized restoration events that rely on volunteers. Commercial caves see a lot of visitors, and although vandalism is relatively rare, lint from clothing or micro trash can build up on trails or areas adjacent to trails. There are project cavers who specialize in techniques for cleaning or repairing dirty or damaged cave formations, and they may spend much of their time underground working to restore these features to their natural state. Some wild caves that are well known, near population centers, and easy to access are unfortunately sometimes vandalized, and the caving community often has organized cleanup and restoration events. Most members of the organized caving community have contributed to cave cleanup efforts, and view it as a way to pay for the privilege of being able to visit wild caves. In the modern age of satellite and LIDAR imagery, new caves are still being discovered by traditional field checking, even in well-traveled areas of the U.S. Some cave entrances are hidden by the canopies of trees or blocked by sediment fill or collapsed rocks. An understanding of the local geology, combined with hints such as the disappearance of surface water, mysterious sources of airflow, and even unusual odors, can lead cave explorers to discover new cave entrances. The activity of searching for new caves is often referred to as ridge walking, and it's the dream of many cavers to discover the next major cave system. Many of the world's longest and most significant caves have been discovered in just the past 40 years, and there are certain to be many more that will be discovered in the next 40 years. In addition to the discovery of new cave entrances by exploration on the surface, many previously known caves are being expanded dramatically through the exploration of new passages and rooms. The most efficient way to explore caves and properly document any new discoveries is through the process of cave survey. Complete and accurate cave maps are critically important and are the foundation for many other activities including resource management and science. GPS and other techniques that rely on radio signals do not work well underground, so remote sensing techniques are not effective for locating or accurately mapping caves. Surveyors methodically map caves in a very manual process that starts at the cave's entrance and involves taking measurements from one survey station to the next in direct line of sight, and then sketching or scanning the details of the cave passage. Survey teams collect the distance, magnetic angle, and vertical angle between survey stations. 
This data, along with the sketch notes, are brought out of the cave, where they're compiled and drafted into a finished map by the cave's cartographer. Study of the survey notes and working maps is the best way to identify new areas to explore. This iterative process of survey, cartography, and exploration allows the thorough understanding and documentation of caves that can be extremely complex and hundreds of miles in length. Okay. Ready for back site? 50.06. Biologists, microbiologists, geologists, and hydrologists often visit caves as part of the fieldwork to support their research, which can be critical to protecting rare species, identifying novel medicines, and protecting the quality of our drinking water. Caves that form insoluble rocks such as limestone or dolomite are often part of a landscape that is described as karst, which is named after a cave-rich region of Slovenia. Karst areas are characterized by sinkholes, springs, and caves where there is very little surface water. Karst topography is represented by about 25% of the Earth's land surface. Due to the high porosity of karst landscapes, any pollution or erosion very quickly makes its way into aquifers that are the source of much of the world's drinking water. Understanding the effects of pesticide or fertilizer runoff, road or housing construction, mining, and petroleum extraction is critical to being able to protect the water quality in aquifers. Caves are nutrient-poor environments that lack energy input from the sun beyond the entrance zone. Animals and microbes that live in these extreme environments have developed special adaptations that allow them to survive. Many of these species are geographically isolated and may only exist in small numbers. Disruption of their environment or life cycle can threaten their very existence. The best way to make management decisions to protect sensitive cave life is to study their population, distribution, and habits. Many cavers, even those without formal training in biology or ecology, frequently volunteer to assist cave scientists and much of the data on cave life has been gathered by this army of volunteer cavers. Microbial life is the most prolific, diverse, and uniquely adapted form of cave life, and can be found in the most remote areas of virtually every cave on Earth. The microbial life in caves is being studied to gain a better understanding of where to look for life on other planets, and even to help develop the next generation of potentially life-saving antibiotics. Visiting caves, when following recommended practices, is as safe as most other outdoor recreational activities, but even with the best skill, experience, and preparation, accidents can happen. The vast majority of injuries in caves are dealt with by the team executing a self-rescue, but for more serious injuries, local law enforcement and cave rescue experts may need to assist. In the U.S., the National Cave Rescue Commission, which is an internal organization of the National Speleological Society, provides cave rescue training. Instructors and regional coordinators with the NCRC also often help support local law enforcement by calling and managing volunteer cavers and providing expertise in cave rescue techniques. It's a good idea for all cavers to attend at least an orientation to cave rescue course, but many cavers want to be as prepared as possible to help their friends and fellow cavers. There are many cavers that spend a significant amount of time getting trained and helping to train others in cave rescue techniques. The vast majority of cave rescues are conducted by volunteers that are trained by the NCRC. There are many cavers who enter caves with the primary goal of photography. Photographs of unique and remote locations underground can do a lot to educate and inspire others to want to protect these fragile environments. Many active cave explorers and scientists originally took an interest in what they do after seeing photographs in magazines or online from sources such as National Geographic. Caves are extreme environments and often require specialized gear, training, and experience to visit. But with photography and videography, it's possible to share these places and experiences with other cavers and the non-caving public who may not have the ability or opportunity to see these places in person. Images of unique and delicate places, formations, or cave life helps in communicating the value of protecting caves and cave life.
Most cavers have gone on at least a few cave trips for reasons other than recreation. Some cavers devote almost all of their time underground to project caving pursuits such as cave photography, cave rescue training, or cave survey. While recreational caving is often the seed that started the appreciation for caves and cave life, for many cavers, project caving provides the motivation and purpose that turns caving from a hobby into their life's passion. If you want to learn more about caves or caving, then visit the National Speleological Society website at caves.org. Click on the button that says Find a Caving Club near you to learn about local grottos and attend a meeting. These local caving clubs can get you started caving safely and responsibly and will help you to learn about opportunities for a variety of interesting caving projects.